we're recording. And I'll tell you, I don't know. I didn't listen to anything. I just sat and uh, and listened to them talk about their lives or whatever. And I don't know. There was some darkness. It's been a dark morning all around. It's that pre pre winter. I gotta lift myself up on angel's wings. The fall back. Yeah, I gotta keep myself. I feel like spring and summer, you can rely on stuff to keep you motivated, positive. But uh, fall and winter, you got to dig deep sometimes. You got to motivate yourself a little bit. Right. You got to make yourself go outside. Got to put on the jacket, whatever. So yeah, I just sat and listened to like an old couple talk about how they uh, don't like that their sister still goes on cruises post-COVID. Were they in sight or were they out of sight? Here. They were right next to me because I went solo to a restaurant. Was it Booth? Yeah, it was almost as close as we're sitting now. Because it was me at a table. Like I was in the booth, table, empty seat, and then there was about two feet old lady, old man, table, and then old lady, old man next. And they were having, I just listened to them volley back and forth <laughs> while eating my, I didn't put headphones in. I was going to write, I left my notebook in the car and I just listened to them. Be like, I just would never go on a cruise again. I mean, like, it's COVID, you know? And then they're like, well, to be fair, there's more open air on a cruise than there is on a plane. Like, yeah, she comes back and she's got COVID. I don't know if it's from the cruise or the flight. And, uh... Have you ever been on a cruise? No, I've never been on a cruise. Neither have I. It's very easy. Save it up for one. You want to do a cruise? No. I feel like that would freak me out, you know, in the open ocean. Yeah, but wouldn't it be nice? I feel like it'd be nice. I want to go... My, on my bucket list is snorkeling. Scru- or scuba diving with whales. Snorkeling with whales. whales. Swimming with whales in the open ocean. Dude, you're going to get gobbled up. No, nobody gets gobbled. Like, two people have been gobbled by a whale. Like, Jonah and a guy in the 70s. A killer whale? Killer whales never kill people. It's like the ice on Greenland situation. <laughs> <laughs> Where it's like... They the call killer whales... They're the nicest. ...have never killed anybody, but... <laughs> Friendly whales have killed like 40 people. <laughs> no, I heard that on a, I can't remember, on podcast or something, but uh, on Rogan, I think. They were like, uh, no recorded deaths of humans attributed to killer whales. Really? Yeah. Isn't there one of them that eats people? Only in captivity is where they've killed people. Oh. Never really? in the wild. There's apparently records of them like saving people in the wild. So somebody got eaten at sea world? Yeah. Really? Yeah, one of the trainers. Uh, mo- probably more than one, but one famously got like, <laughs> got yanked. Dude, that's a rough way to go. Yeah, that scares the shit out of me. That's kind of like, uh, who was the guy that got eaten by the tiger? Siegfried and Roy. Siegfried and Roy. He that's lived like though, a, right? Aquatic. I believe Siegfried he, and Roy. He lived. You sure about that? Yeah. It's fact check. Check. <laughs> check it. Stevie, look that up. I'll pull it up. Dial it in. This is a... Uh... Guys, welcome to Turn Up and Stone. Studio app number two, first one, is technically recorded on my computer. We're in the studio. Yeah. Siegfried and Roy. They were German American. Really? That lines up. Siegfried? Yeah, Siegfried. Siegfried. Siegfried and Roy. Las, <laughs> Las Vegas. That's some Las Vegas shit right there. It is. The 2003 Tiger incident? Is that what they call it? Yeah. He lived. I'm pretty sure he lived. I think he also wanted the people to forgive the tiger. I don't know, man. I'm getting in the weeds here. Have you forgiven Siegfried and Roy's tiger? Siegfried died at 81. And from, But not Roy, related to the tiger. <laughs> Roy Horn is the, his, the other guy's last name. Which yeah, he sounds like he's from Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> but his birth name was Yui Ludwig Horn. Holy cow, that's way more German. How do you U- get to roll out of that? What's UWE? How do you pronounce that? Uh, I don't know. 75, he died. The other one, 81. So I guess they survived it. Yeah. I'm thinking a grizzly man. You ever grizzly, seen a grizzly man? man? Yeah. No, I have not, but he yeah, got, he got, he got gobbled. Up. He got gobbled. You know, you play with fire, you might get burned. He got eaten. Did you ever watch that, Doc? No, but I've, just, I've seen clips. He's a weird fellow. Well, 
Yeah, he's Grizzly Man. And he's like, as soon as you've given yourself a title, you've become a weird man. He's on like an island or something, and the way he talks to the bears is very weird. It's like, hey, big boy. How are you, big boy? And then like in one of, one of the things, like the bear like gets too close and like chews on him. He's like, hey, get get out of here. Get down. Get the hell out of here! Like, we film like Grizzly Man, where, but it's you talking to like Harry Gaiman, and, like big, <laughs> act, like bear bears, Chicago bears, Chicago bears, and it's Steve being like, "Hey, big boy!" And then one of them starts fucking you in the ass. Like, get, get, get out of here! Get out of here! It's pretty wild though. You got eaten. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I, yeah, I think as soon as you've given yourself a title, did he call himself Grizzly Man? I don't know if he did or if that was just the title of the doc. Because nah, if it's a self named thing you've doomed yourself to a uh, you know, bizarre life what would you name yourself would you like if you had to like, give yourself a moniker if, if I was taming bears or like if, no no just if somebody was going to make a documentary about your life and it was going to be like something the tired man. guy you beat the tired the tired, tired guy <laughs> <laughs> tired tired man yeah sleepy like a cat I get your coffee for you, by the way. Bam, Steve. Welcome to Turnip and Stone, everybody. We're here. Eric's grabbing me a hot cup of uh, percolated, maybe a pour over, possibly a pour over coffee. French press. French press. He's a Frenchman. Straight from France. Feeling froggy. God damn, you're really doing this up. I thought you were about to take a sip out of that. I was gonna. No, no, I was just because I made it super strong last time, and I think I did the same thing. That would be a hilarious thing to do. Is like to take a, <laughs> just take a sip and hand it to you. Take a sip out of your buddy's coffee before you hand it to him. Turnip and stone. Ah, just right. <laughs> I have to dial it in for Steve. Holy cow! It looks like look at the camera. It looks like when they do uh, special effects in the Lord of the Rings to make the hobbits. Small, <laughs> new perspective. Uh, well, look, look like you're looking down at me. I'm a giant. Hi, Steve. Uh. <laughs> I wish I could do Andre the Giant voice. Turnip and Stone is an advice themed comedian. Uh, we got to come up with a. We got to dial in the title because every comedian I say we're doing a comedy advice podcast. They're like, you guys are doing like advice for comedians. And I'm like, no, 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 it's like a funny advice podcast. Comedians giving advice. Yeah. Turnip and Stone is a hilarious... I, I would think it's we... It's a not-for-profit <laughs> organization. <laughs> it's a non-profit organization where we look to pair kids in need with generous pedophiles. We're trying to <laughs> give advice and solve cleft palates. <laughs> yeah. My advice is that you donate to Stop Cleft Palates before they, I don't know. So what do we got here? We got any questions? We got multiple questions here. Unless you have advice. Anything. We have any advice? Well, I, I have, have what? Unless you have anything about your day you want to share before you go. My day? My day was, uh, I rooted through the garbage a little bit. Like yeah. a raccoon. <laughs> Did you find any useful garbage? Yeah, I found a lot of wood. Because I'm building, a, I'm trying to build a uh, Halloween decoration. For a lady, just for a lady, or is it for? A, it's for a lady an event. Yes, they're having like a big Halloween party at a movie theater, and she wants me to build the. What is it? Friday the Thirteenth hockey mask. Okay. Yeah. His shack. They want to build like a temporary. You should definitely live in that shack. You. <laughs> you should build the shack, and then when she comes to check it out, you should be on the inside with a kitchen knife and stab her. I gotta say, I do feel like. <laughs> Same person. I kind of feel like Jason from Friday the 13th. I'm like rooting through dumpsters building a house. Yeah, you're going through. She's making you. She's turning into the very monster she so fears. And uh, this is a nice Waffle House. I I know, right? I got that right at the beginning of the lockdowns. I bought myself. No, it was before that. It was just in the darkness. That's how sad the life of a struggling comedian is, is that I bought that like two years before COVID. And I was like, I bought that during lockdown. (laughs) (laughs) And then I was like, no, I was just locked away. Did you buy this at a Waffle House? No, I ordered it online with a Waffle House shirt. Because <laughs> there's no Waffle Houses here. Otherwise, you could just sure buy that. Yeah, the nearest one's in like South Bend or some shit. 
Really? Yeah. I stopped, so I was taking Lily down south, like the first time, and I was going to stop at a Waffle House, and I made the mistake of, I guess there's not necessarily a great Waffle House to be your first Waffle House if you're not acclimated to that lifestyle, but we stopped at a Waffle House that was like connected to a truck stop in like northern Indiana, like the very first Waffle stop, yeah, the first one I saw, I was like, we're going there, and like she and I sat next to each other at the bar, it's like crowded smelly it's still covid so we were still like a, a little nervous and then like a uh a guy with teeth like a feral animal very friendly guy but he had <laughs> chompers like a absolute cave creature sat down and started talking to us just about his life and like i was trying to like run defense for lily but she was pretty uncomfortable it was like a 65 year old long haul trucker with vampire teeth he was dying in yeah solo Yes, yeah, he was solo trucking, and, uh, yeah, he, yeah, he had Hills Have Eyes teeth, and he was just like, and that's about the time my wife, she, uh, my first wife there, she said it was time to be on her way, you know, I don't need much of a home now, because I got the truck, and the truck is my home, I take my home on the road, home is where the heart is, and I've had my heart replaced four or five times, <laughs> my first home's in a dumpster outside of... Lori Research Medical Facility in Chicago, Illinois. I didn't wait too long to get back on the road. Uh, I actually did open heart surgery in my, back of my truck in Tuscaloosa. I trained two raccoons to hand me scalpels. Yeah, and he whistles when he breathes. Every now and then you freeze up, you, you give it a few start, you give it a few heart starts. Yeah, I've been offered a few packages for retirement, but <laughs> somebody's got to get this Wonder Bread to the Jewel Osco. So this was the closest one you could find? Yeah, I was just too... This is a classic theme in my life where I am too eager to do something, and I just jump at the first opportunity to do it instead of waiting for like a standalone Waffle House where we can get a booth, she can look over the menu, she's not like surrounded by... Truckers pissing and farting and shitting their overalls, and I kind of like a I like a restaurant attached to a to a uh, truck stop. Mark and I stopped at one on the way back from Tees. Uh, Mark McFarland, funny comedian, check him out. Wow, that really broke the immersion. Uh, he uh, he and I stopped at one, and it was like, and it was fitting all Nirvana. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lady, she's probably 23, but she looked like a 75-year-old reptile. Nice. Oh, yeah. But she was moving. She was like, you know how like iguanas in Florida, when it gets too cold, they'll like freeze and just fall out of the palm trees rigid? She'd be like, what do you want with that? And I'd be like, bacon, and it would be like a 12-second loading screen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she has to go out on a lot and get sun. Yeah. Yeah, we should have put a heat lamp up <laughs> and a sandstone. And she took our, well, our, yeah, she was wearing like a camo hoodie. Real, it was classic though. There's like kids from a youth group stopped on a trip somewhere. A lot of people going to the Hawkeyes game. What was the, was it just a regular restaurant? No, it was like a, I don't think it was a chain. I think it's just like a diner that there was a grew restaurant. out of a truck stop like a tumor. There's a place I've been dying to eat at. I, I, I cased it one time. Yeah. And it's at a Road Ranger halfway from here to St. Louis. And it's like combination Road Ranger restaurant. Uh -huh. Which in the Road Ranger is one of the best gas, gas stations. stations I think I've ever stopped at. Based yeah. on it's choice just and well, It's run price. well. Yeah, great. There's a lot of good items in there. Yeah. And uh, the restaurant. Who, who's behind the counter in a Road Ranger? Sorry, uh, just to, oh. behind the counter. I don't know. It's usually like a pink-haired, large woman. Yeah, 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 yeah. A country goth. Yeah, country goth. <laughs> <laughs> country goth. The American, the modern American gothic. And uh, the restaurant is like buffet style, and it looks phenomenal, dude. That's terrifying. It looks a very truck stop buffet dude, would scare the shit out of me. It looks like some apple pie, Salisbury steak, Salisbury steak situations. That Salisbury steak has been under a heat lamp since Reagan. There are showers in there, so you could just you could just gravy up and then take a shower. Just gravy down. 
<laughs> gravy up, gravy down, hop in the shower. Here's the best part, though. They have buckets, five-gallon buckets full of, like, cleaning solution. Uh-huh. And you know the sticks that you can clean your windshield off with? Yeah. They... Well, that's lose. a ghost. There's a... They have, like, extended squeegees. So you can clean the whole windshield without even walking around the car. Every pump. It's got a six-foot stick with a squeegee. You can really... I'm a big get the flies off the windshield kind of guy on a road trip. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. to. I maintain the car. You know what I found? Road trip. My windshield, my inner windshield is all the problem. My outer windshield is clean. Oh, that's a nightmare. My inner windshield has gotten spotted over the years, and I don't know what. Oh, it's sneezing. You're sneezing, sneezing on coughing. So I need to. I actually want to take my car to get a detail. My car's a mess. I, my car has become an absolute haunted house. I got a rental. Like last week, and I had this, a similar problem, and it drove me crazy. The whole like the inside was smeared, like they cleaned it with a dirty rag. Oh yeah, the, dude. The rental car, it, the rental car business is going downhill fast because there's such a demand right now for rental cars, and there's no fucking rental cars. Real. So they're just tossed, dude. They're just getting you in a car, unvacuum, you, tossing you out. <laughs> dirty rag. So it was like dirty gray <clears throat> on the inside, and no matter how many times I squeegeed it. Or clean the windshield. Outside, I was just looking through a haze. Yeah, and part of me would not want to clean the in- the inside of a rental car because I feel like that's somebody else's job. Yeah, that was the I thing. I frustrated. I thought about Windexing it, and then you're like, I oh, can't. Like, that's yeah. I have to just suffer through this out of pride. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I, dude, I'm paying thirty dollars a day in insurance. I can't be, <laughs> I can't be Windexing this bad boy for the company. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's a nightmare. I haven't rented a car in forever. I really like it. It's a good feeling. I like getting in a car that's not yours. Yeah, I like trying it out. Except one time I had to drive, we'll bleep out his name, I had to drive Matt Bamwart's Prius. Yeah. As an, I don't know if it's a Prius in general or just the way he had it set up. It's an extendo. It's too, yeah, the, the distance from the steering wheel to the windshield is uncomfortably long. Does that make sense? Yeah, the Prius is like that. It's got a high, it's got like a wide dash. But he's his car is a, he's got like a Prius C. It's like an extended. Yeah, it Prius. was. It felt like driving a, a king size mattress. <laughs> <laughs> it was slow to turn, slow to stop. I couldn't like, if I tried to reach, if I was holding the steering wheel and I tried to like reach the front windshield, like the bottom of the front, it would be like almost too far away. Yeah, it was yeah. bizarre. It was like a, like a raft, for like a shipwrecked crew. Just a rectangular. The Prius drives weird. I will say, I test drove one at the Nissan dealership. Yeah, I was looking at one. They gotta have zippy little ones, right? I did not like it, dude. It was not good. What kind of was it? A, it was just a regular yeah, Prius, a standard, yeah. And then I, <laughs> dude, he, he like he would not stop trying to sell me the car. You know, it was like a used one. Yeah. And I kept offering him like a ridiculously low. I kept telling him I would give him 2500 for it. Like, but I was doing it like 100% straight face. Yeah, that's very funny. <laughs> like, I'd be willing to go 2500 on that like, right now if that's something you want to entertain. Yeah. He's like, no, I can't. There's not a chance I can give that to you. He's like, I can. And he like would knock like 300 out. I'm like, I'm like, I, look, I'd go up to 2700 <laughs> That's the best I'm going to do. What was it? Bryce Lights. Yeah, you never know. It was like ten grand or something, like nine thousand dollars or some shit. Damn. Yeah, if you got seven thousand dollars <laughs> off the piece, you gotta just hit him with the twenty five hundred. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, after we have, we're checking to see if we have any more questions coming in here. Because this is an advice podcast. <laughs> it just plays your clips. <laughs> we could just play Pat McNamara life advice. Pulling off your neighbor's driveway when he's at home. His basic dude stuff. <laughs> <laughs> God, I love him. I might sign up for his page. Anyway, what else is going on in your Instagram? <laughs> well, let's see if we got any more questions submitted. Nope, just one. It's pretty bad. But I have some from yesterday. Okay. You ready to dive in? How many from yesterday you got? Uh, I had three, but I could only find two of them. I say we dive in. This coffee is just... You know, we're just about to start kicking into high gear here. Yeah. How did it come out? Is it a cup of mud like yesterday? It tastes good. Last time? Was it mud last time? I feel like last time I made it super dark. No, I feel like it was good. Did, was I, good. did I say it was bad last time? No, you said you liked it. Is it oh, just yeah. strong? You said it was strong. Yeah, I like a, a stiff kick in the groin <laughs> when I have a coffee. <laughs> that should be our advice for everything. Just kick them in the nuts. 
All right, this is the first question submitted uh, via Instagram at Turnip and Stone on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, your mom's butt. E bombs. E bombs. <laughs> slash blog. <laughs> slash blog. Blogspot, Tumblr, um, yeah, Pornhub, Yahoo. Yahoo. Ask Jeeves. This is the podcast equivalent of Ask Jeeves. <laughs> um, Ask Steves. Ask Steves. Right. All right. How do you know if you're actually into a coworker or if they're just hot and happen to work with you? How do you differentiate between um, the emotions? Do That's, you know if you, yeah. How do you know? Yeah. How do you know if you actually like them and want to pursue something or if it's just like the fantasy of you're working with somebody they happen to be hot? This is almost like how do you like how do they know if they're into them or how do they know if the other person is into them? How do you know if you're actually into them? Oh. Or if you're just attracted to them because you work with them and they happen to be hot. You gotta try it out. Exa- yeah. Okay, nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a young man's question. Yeah, what do you mean? How do you know? Yeah, I think you figure it out. You bang them and then you figure it out. <laughs> Are you a bang first and ask questions later, man? Bang for try it out. You shoot first, shoot first. Ask you would be getting later. civilians killed in Vietnam. How do you know if it's Charlie? You'd be like, shoot first. That plant was, a gun on. That, what, that was that not our whole policy that the was, entire time? <laughs> <laughs> Burn the village down. We can always leave an AK forty seven around. I don't know. Would you have you taken I risks with coworkers? Hike. Go on a hike? <laughs> Think about it. Yeah, this one I mean this is uh I feel like this is gonna be a through question for a lot of these how do you know how how do you know if what you're feeling questions is gonna be uh have have I ever had a romantic feeling for a coworker? No, have you what have you acted on it? Have you No all close. I came close on the clock. You almost came close on the clock? <laughs> yeah, this is gonna the wife's really gonna love this. <laughs> is this from uh this was yesterday, actually. <laughs> <laughs> this was in the past. Let's not... Before you get your panties in a bunch, this yeah. happened over 48 hours ago. This was yesterday. So, no, it was... It got to the point where it was like, is this going to go down? Yeah. And she was like, yeah. And I was like, uh... Shit. And then I like... You checking out? No, I went to... I was going to go to Walgreens and get some bags. And I was like... Uh, then the supervisor was like around the corner. I was like, oh, hey. Hey. <laughs> and that was it. One way to Walgreens for condoms. And I just had to be stiff for the rest of the shift. And... That's brutal. I had a similar thing, except I brought the condoms in. Because I was talking to this girl at work. <laughs> this is true. I was talking to a girl at work. Uh, we were... Um, we had, like, mild hookups. But uh, the hookup had, I believe, fallen short because she wanted to fuck... Uh, raw when she was very intoxicated and I said I declined because I was worried about knocking her up because I was you know a young man which meant the, the the nut was imminent and she was like let's go for it and I was like I can't if it goes in at all you will be a mother and I can't do this she had no uh, sheets on her mattress and the mattress smelled like vodka oh it clearly had been like that for some time. Oh, she's sleeping on a bear mattress. She's sleeping on a bear thermo whatever foam <laughs> oh, mattress. Oh god. So when you come home when you come home like shit faced and you just sweat out the vodka, dude, it you... all just seeps into the mattress <laughs> like cheesecloth. Dude, when you can see like the the, the like floral pattern of on the, the mattress, mattress in someone's house, it is a sad Her story. mattress was the same condition as the rag they used to wipe the inside of your <laughs> rental car. It really just makes me think of an alley mattress, you know? Yes, yeah. Like, ah, this shouldn't be exposed to the air. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, there's something off-putting about it. Yeah, it's like contaminated. Yeah, and as you said before, it's your mattress. You got it. If you don't have respect for your mattress, you don't have respect for yourself. <laughs> like I said, I helped the friend move, and they were just like, just throw it in the bed of the truck. No covering or anything. I'm like, this, for God's sakes, this is disrespectful to yourself. <laughs> it's a third of your life. And so, yeah, so she's sleeping on, like, a Mr. Clean eraser that's just soaked up mistakes for oh. years. And uh, and she's doing great now, and I, I respect her, whatever. This was way back in the early 20s. 
uh, <laughs> the early, the early 20s. This is the roaring 20s. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, I worked in the Tribune Tower, and the bottom, like, basement levels were abandoned, because there's no more, like, the, most of the newspaper operations had been moved elsewhere. Uh, and so we would go down and, like, explore the under dark of the Tribune Tower, where all these books were stacked, and, like, all the old desks. It was cool. I wish I got to work there longer just so I could explore the tower longer. So anyway, I thought there was a chance we might fuck in the Tribune Tower. At the office. But like in the basement. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, there's in the on site. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I got a few condoms to keep in my desk drawer so that during lunch if we wanted to go down there we could go bang. I got fired before we got to bang. And they wouldn't let me clear out my desk. So this is Mattress Girl? Yes, at, oh, at the yeah. office because we worked together. I got fired condoms still in the desk and uh i said uh, they fired me i said all right well, i'll come in monday and get clear out my desk they said you're not allowed black back on the premises on the premise so you just left some rubbers in the no she had to clear out my desk and she found <laughs> the magnums the unnecessary magnums <laughs> you like a little room in the, you buy them like a hoodie yes yeah yeah as i've said uh before you got it i like to be able to breathe not so much anymore, but back in the day. Now I feel like a magnum would just look like a gnome hat. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be Gandalf the White in the magnum. You look like Mickey Mouse in Fantasia. <laughs> uh, like yeah, he just drags along the floor. I, I bet I could put a magnum over my nuts. <laughs> These days. I prefer to bang up the whole unit. Yeah. <laughs> I put it all the way over the left leg. <laughs> and the dick and the nuts. The dick and the nuts. <laughs> I, uh, oh, dude, I saw, speaking of bagging up the nuts, I saw a product called the Baldo. This might have been on a podcast, so I don't want to bite somebody's material. I think it was on Ari's podcast. But it's a dildo-shaped latex thing that covers your nuts so that you can... It gives your nuts a conical shape, so, so you, you can, can double dick. So you can double dick. <laughs> and I'm, I am thinking about investing. Dude, they make like a sheath that you can like, that like it's like a wiener extender that you can just like. Oh, I've seen to give yourself a bigger, a wang. bigger hog. Yeah. <laughs> would you rather have one bigger hog, or would you rather have two functioning dicks on top of each other? One bigger. I go two. How much bigger? Let's say. If you're just talking like a half. You inch, get a. You get a twenty five percent. Increase in dick. Yeah, I'd probably go one bigger. Two one bigger. is the de- uh, you're deformed. Yeah, but two fully functioning dicks. I think there's ladies who get off on that. If you pulled out a double, cock. I've been thinking a lot about the cosmic whore. <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking a lot is about that how. Coffee in that thing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Here, I'll, I'll pass it over. Can I also the cosmic shake? whore? Like as it, as she relates to the cosmos. Yeah, like the like the almost like the star sign of the, because I think that there's an amount of people, or I should say, maybe even everybody, has in them, the like primal lust for like a Roman. Careful, that's gonna drip a bunch on the way up. Like a Roman, sadosexual, post-apocalyptic, bestial, violent orgy, and I think a lot of. Uh, life is deny is consciously denying yourself that not a lot of life, but I was thinking about that. I think that there's a lot of women who would like what? relish if they saw a guy with like two fo- like both the dicks could come, they could both get hard. I think there's a a large minority of women who would be like they would get off on that because it's like a some step closer to like. Like a the cosmic orgy that people can devolve into. Where would the secondary dick be? On top or would it be side underneath? to side? Like no, it's so gotta you could, be. Like, you could just three students. You could just mow. <laughs> Get somebody in the eyes. Three students. Or... I'm sorry if I derailed that with like weird psycho babble about. Uh, so you're saying that everyone wants to have gigantic double dick orgies. Well, I think I just think that I don't know if everybody I don't think everyone wants that to the same degree, but I think there's like a cage in in the hearts of all that like like if you could have like a like a cartoonish 
horse cock and like your whole life was like oh yeah just a non-stop fun, it was just slime holes and ladies <laughs> is that recording because yep. it says zero, zero 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 we never hit record on the audio <laughs> no we recorded on the camera that has audio oh good cripes all right, welcome and to we're live. Welcome to Turnip and Stone. <laughs> we're just getting started here for the first time of the day, and you know what we have to start doing is uh, just leaving the X Y thing recording too as a backup. The X Y, the this microphone, the ambient oh, yeah. sound one. Yeah, but that'll be, yeah, if it's aimed right, I guess. We just need to hit record. That's all. That's the big thing. <laughs> yeah, the big part about recording a podcast is hitting record. We will. I, I don't think the audio on that will be terrible. I don't think that'll be. Unusable. I don't think it'll be usable. You don't think so? I used like a little bit of the audio from the camera in the clip. Really? Yeah, I like I used like eighty percent this, twenty percent that. I guess we'll, we'll test. see. Yeah, we'll find out. But we should just start over. <laughs> so, Steve, what have you been up to today? Anyways, I've been uh, jogging today. I did go for a jog yesterday. I got a jog. I did fifty push-ups yesterday. All at once. I'm sore or? as a fucking. I did 25, <clears throat> five, and then 20. How? What were the intervals I'm in sore. between? Like ba- barely any. Holy cow! I was gonna try to do a hundred, but I, I had went trouble for a doing jog. like 15, 20 at one in one go. Yeah, I mean 20 is. I'm getting up there. I was at a point where I was doing almost 40 straight. But it took took a while. I'm definitely I, it, you lose it so fast. Yeah. Speaking of the and we, we were talking about this, we'll see if we can get the audio for it. I was talking about the cosmic whore, the cosmic whore, the cosmic, uh, the the Squirt. like yeah the <laughs> it's the opposite of the it's the result of the big bang was the big <laughs> squirt, the cosmic squirt. But uh, there's also the cosmic. Uh, I feel like violence is it like that's sort of a an answer to where it's like if you could be like a rippling muscle of like axe wielding no one can no yeah, one who stands before me can live that's another Kangas Khan just beheading villages yes yeah yeah master of life and death how sort of how thing. how long unfettered do you get to like to where you're like yeah, I think I'm good on this. Like, if, uh, like if it's say it's legal, or you're fucking in a time period where you can just fuck like a Roman, and you're having wild eyes wide shut orgies every yeah. night and feeding people to lions. I don't. How think, long until you're like, you know, I think I just want to walk by the river. I don't think that'll happen until your body starts. And even then, I don't think you'll want to. I think that you'll just desperately miss it. And I think that's part of the reason you have to. You can't succumb to the. The deadly sin to the you can't become fully a cosmic whore because you'll you, I, I don't think you ever get tired of it. I think you just start you. So it's like, all right, well, I'll fuck one guy. Oh, uh, well, maybe I'll fuck a guy, but I'll I'll, uh, you know, dildo myself at the same time. Oh, well, I'll dildo myself. I'll fuck the guy. And then maybe we have like somebody watch. And then you're like, oh, well, maybe the sec- maybe we get two people to watch and they can like fuck my face. Well, the guy fucks my ass and I do him. <laughs> and I think it just keeps going. And I think that happens for every cosmic pitfall that exists. Yeah, like drugs. Drugs. Food. Uh, yeah, I w- see, those all kind of fall into the... Co- it's it's gluttony. You it's know gluttony, what I mean? yeah. And then uh, almost like the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Vi- I think violence is the same. If you're the kind of guy who just like... You only care about being able to crush people. And that can come in financially physically if you just care about domination right besting people dominating people uh but a lot of those like those like finance dominant guys like they want to get fucking tied up secretly and yeah well that's they're embracing yeah 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 that's the eyes wide shut stuff yeah, those like hedge fund guys in new york that like want to get kidnapped and ball gagged and fucking yeah they want like an Asian lady to put him in a diaper and make him walk around outside. <laughs> yeah, like goo goo gaga, wah wah. <laughs> I'm a bad boy. Well, it's 5 p.m. Time for me to be hitting the home. <laughs> I'm heading home. He just starts taking his slacks off. But it's crazy to be like during the day to be like, I will own this city. Yeah. And then you're like, wah wah. wah. I went poo poo in my diaper. <laughs> Spank me. I've been bad. 
I've been naughty. I crashed the inn. I've been naughty. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something like because they're always in that dominant force that they want to be a fucking they yeah. switch it up. Yeah, but that's almost uh, that that's starting to bleed over into the gluttonous world. You know what I mean? I mean, all yeah, the they're, they're the same side, different sides of the same, same coin. coin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all pitfalls of life. Speaking of pitfalls of life, we have another question. What do we got? The next two questions kind of suck. But, listener at home, we are a fledgling podcast. So right now, our fans mostly suck. There's no such thing <laughs> as a bad question. How do you overcome fear? <laughs> <laughs> the next question is, why are we here? <laughs> I feel like people aren't going to get the theme of the podcast. Dude, I, w- I was in the sauna and this guy wouldn't stop talking to me at the YMCA. And he, he literally goes... So what do you think about everything that's going on everywhere? <laughs> that was the question he asked me. <laughs> what do you think about everything that's going on everywhere? Did he like, include what? everywhere? He included yeah, yeah, everywhere? Yeah. everywhere? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was your in the sauna? I feel like in the sauna, you'd be like, well, my first thought about what's going on everywhere <laughs> is that you shouldn't be here. <laughs> I just closed my eyes. I was like, what the fuck is going on, man? You should have looked at him and been like, I just stopped believing in God because of you. I was like, I think I just said I dodged it. I was like, I don't know if we have enough time to, to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> like, we might Look, need to we can talk politics all day, or you could put your mouth on my fucking nuts right now in the steam room. <laughs> Do you really want to talk about Russia, or you want to put my log in your chops? Dude, it was just so wild. Put my log in, in your chops. chops. <laughs> Do you think he wanted to fuck? Do you think it was no? He was like steamy? weird, dude. He's like a fucking wandering autistic kid. Because he kept asking me like how to get a job, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, I applied here to be a camp counselor, and uh, it was like he applied there, and he, then he was asking me like what I do. He's like, what do you do for a living? And uh, how'd you get into that? <laughs> like he would not <laughs> stop talking to me, dude. It was like he was on Adderall or something. Doing Adderall and going to a steam room sounds like an awful time. You do do you, it, it well. First of all, it's a sauna. There's a key. There's a big What's difference. The difference. Oh yeah. Okay. So this the is steam dry. room is wet. Everything's wet. It's very steamy. It's yeah. It's way more gay. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you get sucked. Yeah. In at Steamworks in Chicago. Yeah. There's but, a place <clears throat> in Chicago. Speaking of, you should go to the gay steam room in Chicago and just start asking people what they think about what's going on everywhere. <laughs> The guy's like, hey, what are you doing here? He starts to read you for Dude, your cock. You're like, buddy, I'm just here to talk politics with the boys. It is crazy that in Chicago there is that's a Shangri La of gay activity. It's it's built it's a it's the it's, cosmic whore. It's the cosmic whore. It's <laughs> built from semen. Yeah, that's the fa- it's the yeah, that's in a great example of being literally and figuratively sucked into a hole. It seems crazy though how that legally can I think, is it you know, legal? Yeah. And it's, it's legal like, to suck and fuck in there? I feel like somebody It's a gay a, bathhouse. Yeah, but somebody, like, I think technically there's probably a law against sucking and fucking in a gay bathhouse. It's just that nobody enforces it's it. It's the massage loophole. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'd have it's to like get a handy. You'd literally need all of this. If you wanted to stop gay bathhouse sex, you'd need all the police in the Chicago to just abandon their posts <laughs> and run defense <laughs> at Steamworks. You'd need all hands on deck. Yeah, all they just have to go dick. in there and riot. <laughs> just gotta go in there and riot gear and just get. They're getting blasted by semen. The semen. <laughs> <laughs> they just have to approach like a fucking like a Roman. Yeah, like a student. front line. <laughs> I was talking to a gay buddy of mine at a wedding about it. He's like, "Yeah, I've made the voyage up there just to go to Steamworks and get like, sucked and just get discreetly sucked. You can't be and, and suck. Gay guys live." Like, they just like to suck in the mist. <laughs> and I was like, it's crazy because I go to the straight bathhouse. And people ask you about politics, which is worse. You almost rather just have a dude suck your dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, 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 one, the guy that was talking to me about politics, that was a YMCA. That wasn't the uh, the no. official Schwitz. Yeah, that wasn't a, that wasn't a Steve-sanctioned bathhouse. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's, the, uh, the YMCA could go either way. Something about like that specific brand of Boys Town gay guy is like 
I, I almost, I fear and admire being able to stay that horny for that long. Like driving from St. Louis to Chicago to suck in a steam house <laughs> is something that I would have done only between the ages of like 17 and 24 for pussy. You know what I mean? Like that's young man. Like you're like up at night and you're like, fuck, I got to do this. I got to go suck and fuck in the steam room. And you got to go gas up the like. Dude, just like looking for dicks in the fog. <laughs> <laughs> there was one dude there was one like a small like a uh, boutique one on uh, bu- but bu- in the neighborhood house? yeah <laughs> it was called like rainbow sauna i don't know if it was rainbow it was something sauna because i googled it. i was like shit i want to hit the sauna dude if you if steve rains accidentally wandered into a discreet gay suck house a suck house <laughs> a suck factory <laughs> yeah do you just slowly long- back out of the mist yeah could you be worn down? What do you mean? Like, are there enough gay waves that could crash upon the shores of Steve where eventually you get discreetly <laughs> <laughs> sucked in a steamer? Before you eventually go, guys, I'm staying. You, you just become gay. You just go into the into the fog. Yeah, you disappear in the fog. And you come back. Steve Gaines. It's like that. Uh, what's that Stephen King movie? The Mist. The Mist? <laughs> A giant cock comes out of it, just wraps around your ankle and pulls you into the steam room. That's not discreet, though. What That's was an the question? Suck. What was the, the question? question? Was how do you overcome fear? <laughs> Which is really how do you let down the walls and get sucked in a gay bathhouse? How do you overcome fear? See, I, 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 well, I mean, to right? honestly take the, I think this is a good question because I think it's, I think there's a misguided thing with fear nowadays where everyone's like. Fuck your fear. Follow your fear. I like to say fear is a very good thing to listen to, and it's why you're alive. It's like, why does everyone want to not have fear? What's well, I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? It, he's not saying how, how to dispel fear entirely. I see what you're saying, but all, fear can also get people killed. It's just like the cosmic whore and the cosmic warrior. You have to be able to tap into it in such controlled bits as to remain a master of it because you can have you can have no fear and then you die because you jump off of a that's what building. i'm saying is like you have i guess the, what i'm trying to say is it's dangerous to overly dispel fear Your fear yeah, and to yeah. be so like like these guys that like this uh these free climbers and shit yeah have you seen the alpinist uh i saw free solo do you see free solo yeah alex honnell or whatever yeah so they asked him they were like who is the best climber in the game. Like, yeah. Who would you say? And he's like, by far this cat. I forget his name. He's like, a, I think he's Canadian or was Canadian. Yeah. Spoiler alert. But <laughs> he, the documentary is called The Alpinist. And he's like, he's like Alex Honnold, but he climbs not only like rocks without ropes and shit, but he ice climbs and shit with like, like yeah. literally ice axes on fr- just frozen water. Yeah. With no harnesses, thousands of feet in the air. Yeah. The and Alex like has he a has a. He has, there's a problem with his brain <laughs> because he like it's he's it's gluttony he's going yeah, much yeah. like desiring a horse cock and infinite pussies you can get too sucked into adrenaline yeah and overcoming the f- yeah and that's like you're he's turning off that but circuit but that's also how you become the best uh at what you're doing to an extent. Well, yeah, he's dead now. Yeah, but, but I mean, like, like, but he did. He went. He went out on top. It doesn't. He, it doesn't inevitably lead there. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, kind of though. I mean, maybe in free solo mountain climbing, but like, like the way he was doing it, you're just like he's he's just upping. Yeah, but I mean, like, until, but you were overcoming fear to get on stage. You went to go watch well, true, open mics, true, right? And true. then you like built up, and then eventually you take the leap. It's just that your leap was mental, not. Not physical, right? Right. No, not. It's and not to say that that doesn't have its drawbacks because there are people. We could we could spend the rest of the podcast just naming people who took the leap into stand up comedy and are now total goblins. <laughs> <laughs> they were right. They should have been afraid. Yeah, the, exactly. The fear was justifiable. No, I, I get the question of like, how do you soldier on? Because some people are like, I'm afraid to leave the fucking house. 
Mm-hmm. You know, we've all been. I would say we've all been irrationally afraid. Yeah, we should we should give the advice not how to negate fear, but how to overcome it. Because there are situations. Because there are people who die the other way, where it's like, you know, there's a fire in a building, or there's like a you know a a guy shooting up the office or whatever, and you freeze. You can't overcome the fear, and then you get trampled, or you get shot, or you get right, right, robbed, right. or whatever the fuck. There's got to. Um, and that I mean, Steve, I don't want to break too much new ground here. I think there might be a middle ground. <laughs> Call me crazy, but the answer is as vague as a goddamn question, as general as a question. And I think it's like ice water. Yeah. To overcome fear, it's exposure. Yeah. Like you have to, you expose yourself to a small, reasonable amount of the fear. Yep. And then you are able to withstand more and more. But my disclaimer would be: be careful how far you chase the dragon. Or, yeah, I mean, part of you overcoming start... the fear can be acknowledging it. Che- you know, you could check in on the fear. Like, let's put it in terms of stand-up, where it's like, I might be scared about doing this new joke, and then I get up on stage, I'm talking, and then I come to the point where I want to do the new joke, and I can, without being paralyzed with fear, I can go be- tap into my head. I did this the other day, where you're like, uh, you look out the crowd, you see how it's going, you're like, I was right. I shouldn't do that right now. The fear is justified. This is not the time to to lay the new joke down. Right. Sometimes you go, now's the time to overcome the fear. Strike while the iron's hot. Mark, I mean, Mark Norman had a, that good line about when you're scared, that's the time to try a new joke because you'll do it with the most gusto. Or what. But anyway, all that is to say there's not a right or wrong answer. It's just that you should still tap into the fear, check on it, see if it's coming from a rational place or not. You can still use it to make informed decisions without letting it dominate you. Yeah, I agree. Um, that being said. Like, if you're afraid of snakes. Yes. Go to the zoo, but don't fuck a cobra. Right. <laughs> definitely don't buy a snake. Because you're then you're a snake a cobra, guy. Definitely don't fuck a spitting cobra, because then it's coming right back at you. <laughs> There's got to be a couple guys that have fucked the snake. There's a video of it. Really? I haven't seen Pull it. Pull it up. But I've, <laughs> I've heard. Let's of it. see it. I've heard comics talk about it. There's a video of a guy fucking an anaconda. Oh, yeah. It's a sick world. That is a cosmic horror. <laughs> you fuck a snake if that's what you need for a thrill. You're a naughty boy. Yeah, there. It's just boredom. <laughs> <laughs> How long? If you're just what if that's the Philosopher's Stone? <laughs> He's now all-knowing. He yeah. lives forever. <laughs> Let's say you are you wake up, and it's just you're locked alone eternally in a room with a snake. How long till you fucked a snake? It's eternal. Like, it's almost like you died and went to heaven, but heaven is just an empty room with you and a giant anaconda. And I know that it's going to be forever? Yeah. Shit. Six months? <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty good holdout. Next question. Yeah, next question. This question I put at the bottom because it's worse than the other ones. We might need some light in here. We're taking this. Yeah, we're, we're gonna, riding the podcast down into a, the sunset. This is an evening cast. Yeah, let's turn on the light. All right, here we go. Light time. I'm gonna see if I can squeeze a little bit more out of this French press. This has hit me just right now. I'm finally waking up. Steve Irons needs three cups of coffee. Yeah, I, I didn't overdo it this morning because I anticipated I was going to have an evening cup. I just had two. Two I, reheated cups this morning. I did overdo it this morning. I had cold brew, and then I took myself out to breakfast. Cause Here's the problem with the French press. Yeah. The, coffee, getting, the coffee's... What's that? You start getting the chunks? No, the coffee's phenomenal, but it, you know... It gets cold too fast. Oh, I yeah. So I like a, I, I like to cold stuff so much. Yeah, I I do a bad job of not a bad job. I just have like gotten used to because I used to like when I was younger. I love. I mean, I still love tea, but I would go and get uh, what do you call it? Like I'd boil a thing of tea and then make like five cups of tea and just leave them out, and I just finish one. Room temp. Yeah. Well, like I would take one hot, and I come back for the second one. And that one would be like cool, and then I get the third. It'd be room temp, and then it'd be cool. Yeah, I like cold. a hot beverage. Well, look, I like a hot beverage. I'm just saying, I've I've overcome the 
Like, it doesn't. I, I don't. Look, I'll deal with it in the bush. But if I'm in civilization, <laughs> if I'm in civilization, I want a piping hot. <laughs> but I'm an odd, odd bird when it comes to coffee and tea. I like it. I just I checking for more questions. Keep going. Oh, I thought we were just gonna watch your Instagram. Feed. <laughs> no, I'm just checking to see if we get uh, before I read. Did the Did you tell them we're live right now? I said, send a question about a problem in your life for a Turnip and Stone Studio app. And I, it's been seen, I'm pretty sure that the internet has been seen by 27 people. My reels, everything's doing bad. I'm really, I'm down on myself right now. Maybe this time we could just use the rest of the time to audit your social, social media, media presence. <laughs> I'm doing How, something wrong. Is it crazy that there's the job that people have that's just running social media? I mean, it's... Or is it just an evolution of, like, PR? A, it's, I mean, it's it's crazy. If if this was 40 years ago and you described it to us, that would be, like, nothing you could imagine. But in our current landscape, it makes sense. What's 40 years ago? 40 years ago would 2000 been, would be 22. It would be 1982. 82? 40 years ago? No. Yeah. 82, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Carried the one. Let's bring the calculator up. That brings us how to get a girl to just fuck. Nothing else. How to get a girl to all caps just fuck. That's a wild advice question. That's a landmine right there. That's an absolute. I don't know. What did Bill Cosby do? (laughs) (laughs) The Cosby approach possibly. That's insane. To I, just do fuck. Do you subscribe? Hypnosis? I don't know. What are you trying to do here? Do you subscribe to the Cosby method? <laughs> <laughs> Rufalin? Good Christ. Yeah, I would say. Nothing else? Just fuck? I would say the only appropriate answer to this question is ask if she wants to just fuck. And if she says no, you are decline. Yeah. Hard ask out of the gate. Yeah. You say, or I mean, or you start. Just fucking. This is a pretty common thing to do. You, if nothing, if no feelings develop, you just keep fucking until she says, do you want to be something? Yeah, that's dangerous. And then you say, no, thank you. Yeah, I know it's dangerous because now that's I dangerous. can't do the fucking f- comedy fight club open mic. Because <laughs> they're both. It's dangerous. Bleep it. Because you're both going in. You know, and you're thinking like this could be something. That's yeah. the that's the. Everyone's assuming like this could be a relationship, unless it's aforementioned in the beginning. Yeah, well, unless or, it's like unless one you of just fuck, unless you just have like a one night stand, and then you're like, then you know it pops up like. Yeah, but I say yeah. I think the uh, how to get a girl to. <laughs> yeah, that's a wild one. Uh, what about like, what about a large stick over the back of the? What head? about a BJ? <laughs> How to get a girl to just suck? I don't want to. I don't want to suck. I don't want a finger. I just want to fuck. <laughs> Only penetration. Op. The opp. I would say, yeah. You just ask, and if she doesn't want to, there's probably a girl that just wants to. Yeah, fuck a you. hooker. Buy a hooker. Get a hooker. You ever have you legalized ever, prostitution? Have you ever spent money on sex? Have you ever paid for a sexual act? No. And if I had, I don't know if I would proclaim it. Over a podcast. Well, I think this might be even more secret than not <laughs> saying anything at all. No, I definitely have Things not. Things said into the camera before the podcast has even been released might become less than true. <laughs> you might be able to undo your shameful hooker past. Uh, I wish. I wish I would have done it when I had the opportunity <laughs> when I was a single man. I, uh, You know people? Have you? No, I haven't. Yeah, I know people that have. I, but I know people that. It's, prostitution is exactly like gambling where it's like, until I moved out of my parents' house, I didn't even know that I knew people who did it. I didn't know none of my friends were into gambling. And then something oh, happens where work. you get close to your late twenties, where all of a sudden you just start meeting people, and they're like, "Yeah, I, I put like uh, 150 bucks on the game. I'm like, why? You're an assistant teacher. You don't have 150 bucks." <laughs> and then yeah, was, you know, then you start meeting people, and they're just like, "Ah, oh, you know." But I don't think there's necessarily shame in it. Is there shame in hookers? Uh, the answer that's a deeper question. Is there a shame in hookers? That's the whole movement now. Is no shame. Is no but shame. Unfortunately, that pushes you towards the cosmic whore. Right. The title of the episode might be cosmic whore. They say it's the oldest profession in the business. <laughs> it's the oldest profession in the world. 
<laughs> it's the oldest profession in the business. <laughs> in this business of life, everything's business to Steve. But I don't know. Everyone says you should. We should legalize. I mean, I think it should be. Yeah, I definitely just don't like think you. Just let if people want to fuck and charge people for it. I do think it should that like, it should be legal. But in the moral, weird under the moral people. umbrella of Steve Rains, is it wrong? Uh, or is it to pay someone to fuck you? Yeah, I think if I mean if you're not in a relationship, yeah, and it's uh, legal, yeah. The problem I think the big problem is too is like sex trafficking. Yeah, like you can't differentiate between like a chick who's like, I'm a freelance BJ <laughs> sex person, and I like what I do because <laughs> I'm empowered. Yeah, to a person who's like psychologically shackled to a fucking bedpost yeah that's the fear you know it's yeah like, yeah you you're complicit in she the, was into it she wanted to do yeah. it but then you're like oh no she was kidnapped and fucking yeah 80 percent of that went to the sinaloa cartel yeah and that shit goes deep and it's very real and yeah anytime you travel it's like pay attention to human trafficking like be aware of the signs yeah could be people that like can run away but they don't it's that's freaky shit dude. yeah when you're psyoped and you're in it so ethically then it becomes now like here's a, what uh, what about this to prevent that from being a pos- of potential sin every time you pay for a hooker you just all you do is eat their pussy <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that way in case you run into an unwilling person it's almost like you're giving them a night off yeah exactly I'm, i hope i'm not stepping on somebody's bed or something with that that's funny but what would uh legalizing it you think it would that end it the black market the I pimp, mean, it wouldn't end would that it. end the pimp game <laughs> <laughs> if you went if you went legit like 50 cent or would it just be like moonshine I think it would be like, well, it's like, I mean, people still moonshine, but it's not as it's more uh, of a cultural thing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you're never going to get Albanians to not sex traffic. They love sex trafficking. Whoa. <laughs> Kicks got, like a mule. He's got a mouthful of grounds. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Steve's eating mud. I'm going to be shit my pants tonight. Good cripes. Uh, yeah, you might have to go for a hooker. If you want to go to just fug. But then if you're going to do that, you should go. Make sure you do it through as, as honest channels as possible. Yeah, move to Reno. Move to Reno. Go to the Bunny Ranch. Go to the Bunny Ranch, dude. Stop by the Bunny Ranch. It sounds great. It's it's so... I mean, it's, it's Narnia for the Cosmic Whore. When you walk through that, if you're a big spender and you go to the Bunny Ranch... Everything is on its carte blanche. If this girl doesn't want to do anal, you say, I'll take my business elsewhere. <laughs> you go to this girl and you say, two, two bills, and you can have, and I'd like to have your butt. But that's, I don't know. It's a complicated question. Would your lady, would you and your lady ever go to like a strip club together? Nah, she's definitely not into that. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I could coax her. Here's into what it. you do: if you want a lady to just fuck, marry her. How about that? Yeah. Whatever happened to monogamy? How about them apples? This might become the first conservative advice podcast. <laughs> how about you settle down? Nope. How about you make a pact? How about you promise? Jesus. Right, have a Jewish wedding. Have a Catholic wedding. You shutting it off? The card is full. Wow, I got multiple cards. Dude. We now this is now the audio only section of the podcast. We need a camera that just can r- rip through. Yes, unfortunately, I didn't know we were starting a podcast. Trade this thing off. I can't. Where'd you get it at? B and H. No, I got it at like I don't know. Matthew Mitchell recommended it. I think Dahmer's cameras. <laughs> Jeffrey <remember>. Dahmer's cameras. <laughs> Oh. It's for clips. I got it for clips. I didn't know the pod was coming. Oh, yeah. That's all right. We'll figure it out. Well, when we do the live one, Colin will have a camera. And oh. then when this... We need a... Do you have extra cards? That'll be the big thing. Yeah. Because Colin Multiple. will have to replace the card. Uh, do you have any life advice? Do you have any questions you want to give out? Me? Do you have any questions that you want answered? Me? Yeah. Yeah. How do I make a fortune? 
<laughs> what if that's what this? Be- I'm worried that that's what people are going to come and be like, "Hey, do you have any questions?" And they'll be like, "Uh, yeah. How do you get started in the roofing industry?" It's <laughs> not what we were going for. Ah, uh, dude, I'll answer that. How do you get started in the roofing industry? You yeah. apprentice. I would say, what's your ambition? Do you want to own a roofing company? Yeah. No. What if he just wants to be the best, like roofer, physical roofer in the game? He doesn't care. Dude, about money. I'd be like, you know how many people would hire you as a roofer? You know what roofers do? Percocet. Really? <laughs> Dude, roofers get fucked up. You know, that's, that's they'll fall out of the tree like iguanas. Dude, they'll tumble right off. <laughs> the fentanyl go cold up there. <laughs> the fentanyl just balances you out. For the adrenaline of high top tier roofing, dude, that is the hard. That's got to be one of the top, like in demand jobs. Well, no, just like most strenuous, yeah, existences. Because you're like you can't really roof in the winter, yeah. So you're doing it in the summer, so they work like all out in the season. I mean, unless you're in a different climate, like, but in the Midwest. Yeah. So you're working like sun up to sundown in direct heat. Yeah, you're up. It, you're close to the sun. At heights. Much like Icarus. You might be flying too close to the sun. <laughs> I think roofs might be decadent. <laughs> <laughs> but part of me, like, <clears throat> I could do it. You could just be a full-time roofer? Yeah. An FTR? Because you're up on roofs. It's kind of cool. Something nice about being on a roof. It it feels like sneaking into a place. I used to just get drunk and climb up on the roof of people's houses. In uh, North Carolina, when I went back to see my friends a couple years ago, we were at a bar that was in like a, you know, a nice part of downtown Cary, North Carolina, and so it was in like this little shopping mall thing, two stories. We went out of the bar looking for the bathroom, found that the door to the stairwell was unlocked. Went up two flights of stairs, and then there's the ladder. The trap door to the roof was unlocked. We just sat on the roof of that. It's a good feeling. It feels like youth. Something about being on the roof really f- makes you feel like it's uh, your city, your time. Yeah. I, it's almost like a Batman feeling. Yeah. Except Kinda if like, anybody had any trouble at all, I would not be able to help them. I'm shit-faced yeah. and I'm way out of the way. I'm on the roof. Right. But it makes you feel like uh, I can keep an eye on this place. Yeah. I got the, it's you're surveying your kingdom. <laughs> yeah. Dude, we humans love a view. People do like a view. That's a. I think that's an animal thing. Because you feel you think it's because you can look around, like see if an enemy army is approaching or I something think, like that. Well, I think it's like you can see predators and you can also see prey, so you can be like, I can hunt yeah. easier. Like if you get hot, like if you're looking for a fucking deer or something, you're like, I want to get high up so I can see like miles. Yeah, I can tell where shit's at. <laughs> yeah, people. I can also see stuff coming. Yeah. And then eventually that becomes the free solo guy. He wants to get as high as possible. <laughs> yeah, but it's like dumb. He's like climbing on the fucking edge of shit. Yeah. But I mean, it's cool. It's interesting how we'll, we'll just like, if people want to go there, mm-hmm. we'll just be like, just just let him like go. Just it's fine. It's He's got it. Yeah, he's allowed to go try and climb. Yeah, we're just like, yeah, maybe he'll do it. Well, yeah, it'd be weird if there was a, a rule. Like, you can't make a rule against just like, walking down to Patagonia and finding a mountain and going up the mountain. But there is an interesting conversation we had about that. It's like, how much should we pad? Like, should we just let every cliff be wide open? Like, <laughs> yeah. Or is it like to a certain point, you're like, okay, thousands of idiots are going to be here. So it's like bet more cost effective we to put a put fucking a, rail up. Put a fence up. Cause yeah. we're sick of rescuing people. Yeah. So it's like a middle ground. Like for you sure. don't, yeah. you should be able to take your own risks. But at a certain point, it's like, this is costly to let idiots just fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, th- that's the difference between like, uh, you know, the Grand Canyon right off Route 66 and like the tallest mountain in Patagonia. Right. Because you can't right. really get foot traffic all the way down there at the edge of. I really want to go see Patagonia one day. It's like so an alien I. world. So do I. It's at the on the so south, it's cold again. Bonkers. Yeah, that would be crazy. Patagonia. I think there's this guy who barbecues. That's for or no, I'm thinking of Argentina. Yeah, that's our barbecues big in Argentina. Where is but it, isn't that where close? they like roast the pig underground? They like bury it in the sand. I think that's like, like a Hawaii holes. Hawaiian thing. Dang, I like, an, that like an islander, maybe a Polynesian deal. Got some kind of islander situation. Yeah, 
God, banana leaves. We should leaves. do an old timey advice podcast for people like how do you how would we sail across the northern Atlantic, dude? Did you watch that? Did I send you that thing? The vil- the voyage of Sarah Manuk. Oh yes, but I haven't watched it. It's crazy, dude. I'm behind on the whole on the group chat as a lar- at large. Pretty wild. These they build like a period craft, and sail across the Atlantic. Atlantic to figure out what how you get to Madagascar. Wait, I, I think it's the Atlantic. I don't know. It's like some guy was like to prove his th- hypothesis that like this is how human beings like migrated from one landmass to another in whatever the fuck BC. Yeah, how they scooted around the world. I was watching somebody. I was watching mountaineering videos yesterday of a guy, like a guy doing in the Alps. A couple of guys in the Alps, a couple of gents in the <laughs> Alps, climbing up. And it's like, dude, you just die so fucking easy. Yeah, it is like oh, other countries, like uh, especially like Nepal and fucking. There's some crazy mountains out there. When you think about, it, I mean, going back to the question about fear, like I feel like that's one of the things where it's like. If you're going to do that, you have to turn the fear off because otherwise you'll make dumb decisions. Kind of the same getting on stage where it's like you got to just shut that part of your brain down because I've done stuff where like as a kid where it's like I'm climbing a tree, I'm climbing a tree, I'm climbing a tree. And it's like it's monkey brain. I'm fully like back in instinct and it's just hand branch, hand branch, hand branch. And then you look down and you're like 45 feet up in the air and all of a sudden you're like, fuck and that's when you slip you get nervous you get shaky a branch breaks you're not present anymore so i feel like with the apple like it or the the alpine stuff it's like it is crazy but if you stop and think about how crazy it is you're like upping your chances of fucking up well i think that's where people get screwed up too is they're like they try to power through and it's like no you're not that guy pal (laughs) you know what i mean you're not that guy pal you're not, yeah. Well, like, you got to understand your limit. Like, if you're f- afraid of that shit, you're dangerous up there. Yes. Yeah. You're yeah. more dangerous than a guy who's not. Yeah. Or who's confident. But what freaks me out with the climbing and the mountaineering and shit is like, dude, you could get to a point where you get climbed out. Yeah. And you can't go down or up. Because you're just exhausted because you climb like you can make a climbing maneuver or a hiking maneuver oh that can be and you go in such a way where you're like uh okay i got it but like i'm fucked now like i can't go down yeah and i can't go up yeah and like yeah that's i i went rock climbing with uh mr evan hall and his buddies and it's at this like it's it's that feeling of like uh, it's it's at some place where they don't have the automatic belay system. You have to like, Clip I just had in. to like have like his friends like tie me to them to belay me, and like I was even doing like not because there are some that are like two hundred feet. It's like a four story hollow building, and then there's some that are like just half of that. And like when you get the momentum and you get going up, 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 and then it's like the difference in how I would act like on a state fair one, you know, where you just like. You know, when you do those as a kid and you let go, the little automated winder thing to sort of... Yeah, it's the like auto fun. Bullet. This, like, I get up and I'm like, oh, if I fall, first of all, I just hope that these guys know how to tie these knots. But second of all, like, I just fall till my rope catches to wherever he held it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's not... And I, then, like, I would just be... I'd get up to a certain height and then I'd just be clinging to the side like a lizard on a tree. Right. Where I'd be like, I don't want to move. I can't, you know, it's so much more visceral that way. And the next, like you might be able to get the next move, but you got to lunge for it and then you get it. And then you're like, Oh, I can't go back. Yeah. 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 And watching some of them like do it was, we, I guess it's just something, again, it's like anything else. You build up that confidence and the tolerance to sure. it. Sure. But it does. It is like your odds of dying go severely up when you start deciding to rock climb. Yeah. Like, I was listening to a podcast two days ago, and this guy was talking about how, like, he was getting into mountaineering, mm-hmm. and his, like, life, he was, like, trying to get life insurance or something, or he had life insurance, and, like, he, to- like, disclosed that he was a hiker or that he was mountaineering, and his premiums went up, like, fourfold. 
That's because like actuaries know the statistics of like how long you like you of an event actually part. happening. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, but my butt dude in St. Louis. I I don't even want to tell it because my friend tells the story, but like he took a guy rock climb. We used to get get into it, go into the climbing gym. Mm-hmm. It's like like you said, hollowed out five story buildings and shit like that with like artificial walls up and yeah, auto belays and and all, you can also have like a guy belaying you. And he took a dude from his work who was like an older guy, ex Chippendales dancer, <laughs> and he didn't watch him when he hooked his harness up. Uh huh. And the people at the gym didn't like see it. Yeah. And first out of the gate, the guy like clips in. Joe's like, he's like get coaching him up the yeah. wall. And he goes, he's like going up. He's like, am I all good? And he's like, yeah, just keep. You know, you're doing great. You know, from the ground, he's like, keep it, you're killing it, you know? And yeah. He's on an auto belay. It's like his, you know, five-year-olds do this shit. And yeah. he's like all the way up at the top of the wall. He's like, he's like, nice. He's like, so what should I do? He's like, you just let go and, it, and then kick off the wall on your way down. And he's like, all right. And he lets go. Oh, my God. And dude. all of a sudden, he just hears, whoosh, like I heard like a whip, whipping noise. And the guy fell five, like four or five stories onto his back in the climbing gym. Fucking and Jesus just bounced Christ. off the ground like all, it was like padded ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> dude, my buddy like, he's like, my heart just like sunk. Yeah, that's and awful. and he said the that's dude horrifying. was just like, oh, just like writhing in pain. And he said the weirdest part was was the guy was like, did the uh, did they see, did anyone see? <laughs> like he was in more embarrassed. And he's like, dude, nobody cares. Are you all right? The guy couldn't move. Yeah, what happened? What was the diagnosis? So they run up. He clipped in the wrong spot of his harness. Yeah. And, <laughs> and dude, my, my buddy. I don't know why I imagine. He's like, just just push off. And he pushes. And he like, he's just clipped on wrong. And it just rips harness and shorts off. And he's in like <laughs> his the white boxers with off. the hearts. Like in the Looney Tunes cartoon. He's like, oh, did she see? Did the lady at the front desk <laughs> yeah, see? He was embarrassed. And my friend was like, dude, you're like, are you okay? We need to call an ambulance. He's like, don't call an ambulance. Don't call an ambulance. He couldn't stand up. Yeah. So he ends up helping this guy into the car because he refuses to get an ambulance. Yeah. And he takes him home. And apparently this guy's a Buddhist. And he's like, it's my karma. Like, it's not, you know. Holy cow. He has to carry (laughs) this guy into his house. This, my buddy's a big dude. He, like, picks him up and carries this guy into the house and lays him on the couch, mm-hmm. right? And he's texting him because he feel, feels so guilty. Dude. Yeah. He's, like, bummed out. He's, like, I would also be scared he'd just die that night. You know what I mean? Like, he's got, like, <laughs> dude, a, a this guy was like, lung. no, it's my karma. I deserve it. This is how things are supposed to play out no, cosmically. I fucked and killed a 14-year-old when I was 28. Dude. <laughs> this so is he's texting him. He gets this guy on the couch. He keeps texting him. Mark, have you called your si- like sister? Have you called your family? Like, Yeah. He's like, go. You got to go to the hospital. He's like, I'm not going. Blah blah blah. Eventually, he goes and like his family member, because he can't get off the couch. His family member go. They like get him X-ray and stuff, dude. He broke his spine. Part of his like, <laughs> his his uh pelvis was broken. Like, oh my, his gosh. leg. Yeah, like he was, but he was like bedridden for like six months. <laughs> Good God almighty. And like I t- I talked to my buddy about it. He's like, I will never. I'm never gonna go again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's all it takes. And they could, apparently he's like he could have sued the fuck out of the gym because nobody there checked his harness. Yeah, and he could have like, but I don't know. He might have. I think he signed a. But apparently they had all these waivers and shit. He's too Buddhist. He just too Buddhist. Fault. It was his karma. But that's the thing is like, you know, shit happens. <laughs> you're trusting like all that to go right. Yeah. And it's all a funny game. Oh, it's statistically you're more likely to die. It's like, no, you're climbing up a fucking wall. Yeah. You're not gonna fall off of a wall and die if you don't climb up a bit up the thing. Yeah. But I'm a I'm like an old man these days. Yeah. I'm like an insurance I live my life like an insurance company. <laughs> like they're always watching. No risk. Yeah. That's why I'm gonna move out to Bowling Brook. Get a nice spread. Lock Get a ranch house, house so the roof's not too high. You can work on it yourself. That does sound awful. No, I like I like risks, but it's like 
I almost I'm almost at a point where I'm like I gotta calculate. Yeah, you're running. The, I want to save the up. Numbers. You're running the figures. And you got you reach a point where you're like, all right, I'm gonna all the risks. I'm gonna save up for emergencies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All my luck, sense. my monkey's paw, my fucking yeah. I'm saving my wishes. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I get that. I'm definitely saving my wishes when I can. I get that way sometimes. Where, like during the day, I get superstitious where I'll be like, "Fuck, I hope they still have like, you know, the autumn cinnamon shake at Chick Fil A." <laughs> and then I get them like, "No, no, no, I don't want to burn the <laughs> the wish. I don't want to burn it on this. I'll just deal with whatever they have." Oh, my good Lord. All right, you want to wrap it? Sounds good to me. That was like an hour and a half, 15 minutes, hour 30. Goodbye. Turn up in stone. We need better questions, but otherwise, we're good. Yeah, that's Pretty it. good. Best podcast. <laughs>